on your feet and just give God your best praise. Give him a hallelujah. Give him a thank you, Jesus. You didn't have to be here this morning. But God saw fit to let you have let you get on up one more time. So we got an opportunity to give God praise. And this, this is the last Sunday of Black History Month. And what we're gonna do, we want to take y'all all the way back. Anybody here love some Andre Crouch? Where, where are my Andre Crouch folk in here? Y'all love little Andre Crouch. We're gonna take y'all back a little bit. Y'all come on and get with us. Take, take me back. Take me back. Take me back. Come on, anybody remember this? Come on.
beginning and the end. He's a bridge over troubled waters. Everywhere I go, that he is also. I put it all. I put it all. I put it all. How many of you can say that? That I put it all in his hands. No matter what's going on, no matter what we've been through, that can be an anthem for our people, right? No matter what's happened over 400 years of slavery, treating us like we're second-class citizens, we still stand here today as a proud people because we did what? We put it all in his hands. Somebody throw your head back and say glory and give a loud shout, hand clap of praise. Go ahead. Give a hand clap of praise for your ancestors, for your people. I want to shout out Arkansas in the house, our people that put it all in his hands. We're so glad that you're here today. Obviously, we are here to celebrate black history. Before you take your seats, go ahead and greet those around you. Find somebody to say hello. Give a high five, give a wave, give a fist bump. Those of you at home, we welcome you and thank you so much for tuning in. Once you've greeted, you can be seated. Go ahead and take your seats. We greet you at home as well as in the sanctuary. We thank you so much for being here on today. We are celebrating black history because we are living history. Right now is black history going on. So as we go through today, we're gonna celebrate our past, we're going to acknowledge those who have gone before us, and then we're going to focus on our future, and we have some young people that will come and bless our hearts, and then we'll wrap up talking about the future. So we'll look at our past, and then we'll look at our present, and then we're going to look at our Future. My name is Sanja Sam. I'm one of the associate pastors here at Greater Life Church, and it is our desire that you live the life that you were created for. And so if you haven't found your place, how do you do that, Pastor Sanja? You do that by, by finding a place to serve, by finding a place to give. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he did what? He gave. And so we want to follow in that. That's part of why our people are still here. They refuse to get up, give up. They were continued to give and to give and to give. Some even gave their life, but they also gave their talents. They gave their resources. So we want to encourage you to find a place in this house to give, to give your resources, to give your talents, and to give your gifts. So we're going to go further in our program, and we're going to start by celebrating our past. Don't allow anybody to don't make allow you, anybody to make you feel that you are nobody. Always feel that you count. Always feel that you have worth. And always feel that your life has ultimate significance. Good morning, Greater. All right, growing up in a house of professional educators, I never had the option of not recognizing our past and finding ways to make history in the present, in the moment. So this is an original piece that was written over 20 years ago by my father, and I'm going to take you through a day in black history as we celebrate the accomplishments of African-American scientists and inventors. Now, I do have some norms. As a teacher, I like to give norms. So as you hear me read the name, or you hear me say a black man or a black woman, I would love for you to show some honor and hold up that fist. Are we ready? All right. I have traveled a great deal during my professional career, and on one occasion, the hotel stay that I was scheduled to stay at was overbooked, and I was forced to share a room with my coworker. My stay went a little bit like this. I got a good night's sleep in Mr. Leonard ba Bailey, a black man's folding bed. I was awakened by the sound of Mr. Benjamin Banneker, a black man's clock. The room was comfortable. It was heated by Ms. Alice Parker, a black woman's central heating system. I used Ms. Sarah Boone, a black woman ironing board, to knock out the wrinkles of my suit that had been dry cleaned by Mr. Thomas Jennings, a black man's dry cleaning process. I used George Washington Carver, a black man's shoe polish, 
to put shine on Jan Matzlinger's dress shoe. After getting dressed, I used Miriam Benjamin, a black woman's gong signal, to contact room service for my breakfast. The waiter used Mr. W.B. Purvis, a black man's fountain pen, to write my order on paper invented by, you guessed it, the Egyptians. The eggs I ordered were kept fresh by Mr. J. Stanford, a black man's refrigerator, and they were beaten by Mr. Willis Johnson, a black man's egg beater. Ms. M.M.E. Jenkins, a black woman's pancake mix, supplied the pancakes. After breakfast, I headed to the front desk to check out, and I pushed the button for Mr. Alexander Miles, a black man's automatic elevator door, to reach the checkout counter. The clerk used Mr. Marks Dean computer to tally my bill. Once in my car, I could not help but notice the streets were clean, and that was made possible by Mr. Charles Brooks, a black man's street sweeper. I was able to stop because of Mr. Garrett Morgan's traffic signal, and my car ran smoothly because of Mr. Granville T. Woods, a black man's automatic brakes. I was somewhat alarmed by the sound of Mr. Woods' helicopter circling overhead to a burning building. No doubt they will use Mr. Garrett Morgan, a black man's gas mask, to protect the firemen from the smoke. Mr. Tom Marshall, a black man's fire extinguisher to fight those flames. I was glad to pull up at my home at last. The lawn had been well maintained thanks to Mr. John Burris, a black man's lawnmower. Mr. J.W. Smith, a black man's lawn sprinkler, kept it watered. Standing at my front door, I, could hear, I couldn't remember the code um, for Mrs. Marie Van Button Brown, a black woman's home security system. I pulled out Mr. Randy Alt, a black man's disposable cell phone to retrieve the code. Once inside, I was hungry from my trip and I fixed a bowl of Mr. George Crumb, a black man's potato chips. After that, I used a, I had some of Mr. August Jackson, a black man's ice cream. The meal caused me to have some discomfort, so guess where I had to go next? I had to use Mr. T. Elkins, a black man's toilet commode to get that all out of my system. And if, 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 this is my last meal. Mr. Albert C. Richardson, a black man's casket, will take me to my lowering um, resting place. Thank you guys so much for going through a day in black history. And P.S. Dad, I love you. People are dying slowly every day. The enemy's trying, attacking every way he can. We gotta fight, we gotta fight, we gotta fight. You see, in this generation, materialistics swallow the minds of these innocent children, yeah.
Cause they're so confused about these hopefully teachings Making a bad name for all of us Christians So many saints are holding unforgiveness Got nation against nation But hate the Come on, come on, come on. You can do better than that. You can do better than that. Oh, my gosh. This is a war cry. Did you get that? Devil, you can't have my mind. This is a war cry. Anybody had to do a war cry in the middle of the night? Have you ever had any situations that you had to just walk around in your house? I don't know about you, but there have been times in my life that I had to hit my knees, and I just had to yell out to the Lord. The Bible says, cry out to him, and he will be near to you. And then those people let us know that it was about spiritual warfare. That's really what our fight has been about all of these years. It's been about spiritual warfare, trying to keep our people down, trying to make them feel as though they're second class, class citizens, trying to make them feel as though they don't have anything to contribute. But I can look back in my family line, not only that poem that was written by our own Deacon Robert Ward, delivered by his daughter, who is legacy in this house, Alicia Ward. Not only those people, but I'm sure all of you as well can look back in your family heritage and see where there were those who were the first of this and the first of that. We were actually celebrating birthdays with a couple people in this house, a couple women, we call them sister girls in this house, and found out that one of those actually helped to integrate Neiman Marcus, had a sit-in. And we got other people in this house we heard that they've integrated as well, the Boy Scout, 
that they stood, that they marched, that they made a difference. And they said, my voice is going to be heard and we're going to contribute. So this time, at this time, we normally every year has become tradition that we honor as our living legacy and heritage in this house. And we were talking and trying to decide who on earth could that be for this year. And guess what? We just decided that it's all of our silver stars. Our silver stars that are 80 years old, our silver stars that are 70 years old, we know that they've been through some things. We know that they've had to fight. We know that they've had to do some war cry. And they're still standing. So let's start. If you're 80 years old, could you please make your way to the front? If you're 80 years old, 80, if, if you don't mind being honest and letting people know, any 80-year-olds in the house? 80 years old, 80 years old, come on to the front. If you're 80, if you're 80 years old, because we know you've been through some things. We know you've dealt with some things. But look at you, you're still standing. Look at you, you're still here. Look at you, you're still smiling. Look at you, you're still looking good. Mr. Bruce over here. Come on up, Sister Pearl. Pearl Morin. This is who we found out. Went and sat in Neiman Marcus at the Zodiac restaurant. Said, we will be served. We will have a place at the table. Joining these legacies, if you are 70 years old and you don't mind letting the world know if you are 70, 70, 70, would you please come to the stage? If you are 70, look at them, look at them, look at them, look at them, 70. Look at our 70 year olds. Wow, wow, wow. 70 year olds. Come on, Miss Beauty Queen, Miss Mary Kay. Come on, as she stroll on down. Look how beautiful how beautiful they are. Give a round of applause. These are our silver stars. This is our legacy. This is our heritage. These are the people that have pushed the doors open for us. These are the people that have stood and said, we have those coming behind us that we have to continue to fight. We have to continue to stand so that my children and my children's children can have a place in this world. So we honor you, Silver Stars, and we say thank you so much. And we have just a little token for you. We just have a little token for you. Go to McDonald's and grab some coffee. I found out that you can get senior coffee for 50 cents at McDonald's. <laughs> so this is just a small token, small token, small token. And if we run out, let us know, let us know. If we run out, let us know, okay? How many more we need? We'll, we'll get four, just one more? Okay, well, I'll give you that $5. <laughs> so you can get some coffee, all right? Now, before we let them take our seats, we started with 80 and we went to 70. But there is a 90-year-old. And obviously, she can't be here today. But her name is Mrs. Lorraine McGowan, 90 years old, still standing, 94, her daughter says 94. So Miss Lorraine, we don't know if you're watching, but we want to send love your way, and we want to let you know that we thank you, because we know you've seen some things. We know that you've endured some things, and because of you, we are, and we say thank you. Thank you so much. Give it again. Give it up again for our silver stars. You may be seated. You may be seated. Thank you so much. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, we hope you've enjoyed our program. We got one more closing song that we want to end with. I hope you enjoyed as we looked back at our past and you've heard about those inventors and then we looked at our future. And you may say, well, why do we have our civil stars come up in our future? Because they're still here. 
and they're still making a difference. And now we're going to focus our attention on the present, excuse me, they're part of the present, and now we're going to focus on the future. now. 
Come on, come on, give God some praise up in the house. Come on, give God some praise for the power of one. Now, I want you to just for just a moment, I want you to thank all of these young people as well as their parents and guardians. Come on, give them a hand of praise. Come on. Oh, thank you, my brother. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, y'all can do better than that. Come on, come on. Woo! What a blessing, what a blessing. Glory to God, glory to God. And what a, what a most fitting tribute uh, to honor all of our silver stars. We thank you. We know that we wouldn't be here without you, without your blood, sweat, and tears, without your sacrifice. And oftentimes, you are overlooked, and we apologize for that. That's a part of culture that we got to get better. But on today, we celebrate our silver stars. Give God a hand of praise for them right now. Come on, come on. One of the silver stars said, Pastor, I'm just standing up here. I'm actually 25. I said, yes, ma'am. <laughs> I just don't want them to feel by themselves. I'm actually 25. Well, praise God for them. And what about these musicians and this, these singers on today? Come on, come on. Bad, just bad. Our AV, our camera personnel, ushers, hospitality. Y'all, it's time to go. Hey, man, who cooked today? Who cooked? Y'all think I'm joking. I ain't preaching. I ain't preaching. I have a thought, amen, I have a homily. But one thing I've learned is on these high holy days, just kinda thank the Lord and keep it moving, amen. But there is a verse that I want you to put in your, is that Thea? Girl, you better get out of here. You better get on out of here. Y'all give God some, I surely ain't got to preach now. We gonna just praise God. Thea McHale, we, would you please stand up, Thea? Look at God, how good God is. Come on. Thea, it don't make no sense how much I love you. It don't make no sense. Since the first I met Thea, come on, Thea, don't testify right now. Get a mic. Get a mic to her. You going to testify, Thea? Okay. It's okay. Now, you, you can have a mic. Uh, let me share this. Since I got here in 2011, one of the most constant, consistent, encouraging people has been Thea McElwee. I'm talking about, I don't care what's going on, she gonna send me a text, and Thea, no, I don't do well with phone calls. Thea's gonna call me, and she's gonna say, Pastor, you gonna talk to me today. And I can go and see her to check on her, and she ends up just encouraging me. And uh, checked on her a few days ago, and we just, we just gonna keep praying because that's the best thing for us to do. Give God a hand for Miss Theo. Come on, come on, y'all. God bless you, my sister. Wow. I've been sitting here the whole time. And, and uh, so regal and, and, and pretty. You're so pretty, Theo. Praise God for, for you. Um, wow, that's good, that's good. Psalm 78, Psalm 78. I'm Baptist, I gotta give you something. Psalm 78. Uh, give you some, Pastor Sonja, thank you for all that you've done as well as your team, all those who led. Uh, Sister Marianne Love conducting the ensemble. I sure didn't know you had that. Sister Marianne Love, you, you go girl, you go girl. All right, Psalm 78, Psalm 78. Two verses, verses three and four. Those that have found it say, I've got it. Amen. Oh, look at, look at Elder Dashiki, David standing. Bless you. Here is the word of the Lord. Two verses. You can stand or you can remain seated. Things we have heard and known and that our ancestors have passed down to us, we will not hide them from their children, but will tell a future generation the praiseworthy acts of the Lord, his might and the wondrous works he has performed. And the people of God said, amen. If I were to preach, you may be seated. If I were preaching, I'd call this the beauty of history. And I want that piano man just keep playing. This is kind of like a spoken word. Amen. God bless you. Amen. The beauty, the beauty of history. What we have attempted to do today was to sim simply offer a reflection on our history. 
We have witnessed, at least in recent times, that the, the understanding of our history is under attack. And oftentimes, we fail to realize that that really is historic and that it's under attack. That is in keeping with history as we know it. And as I read this passage, I remember, I remember some things about my own history. I remember some things about my great-great-grandfather and great-great-grandmother. And these were things that my grandfather wrote to me in a letter teaching me about my history. And I realized how important it is for us to pause and to reflect and to remember. But understand why we do these things. We do these first and foremost to celebrate, to celebrate the goodness of our God throughout generations. And many of you can remember and reflect moments that you shared with the elders in your family around a table as they simply shared with you the wondrous works of God throughout your family. So we do this to celebrate. We do this to reflect. We do this to remember because we understand how significant our history, in fact, is. We understand how we have endured, how we have soared as a people, how we have soared above those who don't think much of us. But understanding that history is not even about that. It's it's about seeing the hand of God moving throughout all that he has done in and through our lives. So here is, if I were to give you a principle, I want you to write this down. Reflection is essential. Get that down. Reflection is essential. When we attempt to erase history, we lose the opportunity to reflect. And that's why these annual black history programs are so important. They may seem simple and they may seem just, oh man, do we have to do it? But we do. Because the minute we don't, that's when we start to forget. Y'all, reflection is essential. Verse 3 says, things we have heard, I like that, and known, and that our ancestors have passed down to us. I learned something I didn't know. I, I, I didn't know a black man made a lawnmower. Don't act like you knew that too. You didn't know that either. Come on now, come on. Now I knew some of those others, but the lawnmower, that one escaped me. Especially how I hate the motor. That's the whole nother story. Things we have heard and known and that our ancestors have passed. Y'all, reflection is essential. It's non-negotiable. So I wrote here, looking back for the purpose of learning. So we look back to learn. We look back to learn things we didn't know. Young people, I'm really, I'm zeroing in on you because in a very little while, we're going to pass the mantle on to you, and it's going to be up to you to make sure this information, as the Scripture says, is passed down. Reflection is essential because we look back so that we can learn. And I wrote here, we look back to learn as opposed to looking back to become angry. We don't look back to become angry because even when we see the horrors of history, we can still see the presence of our God. And that's the thing that people of faith, we always come back to the presence of our God. Y'all, we are too blessed to be angry. I need a witness up in here. We are too blessed. Come on, saints. Come on. Come on. This, this is not an opportunity for an angry black man to grab the microphone. I ain't mad at nobody. I need a witness up in here. You know why? Because my God is too good. And I have enough sense to know that anything you have established against me, it will fail. No weapon formed against me will prosper. You can put a system in place. You can put whatever you want. But the God I serve will allow us and me to rise above it. I'm too blessed to be angry. And it's not healthy anyway. But I'm not too healthy to be wise. That's why we look back to learn. We look back, we reflect so that we can, in fact, learn. And when I look back, I discover that the systems were stacked up against us. But watch this. We climbed the stack. <laughs> they were stacked up against us, and we climbed. We soared. We, we rose to the occasion. Not only look back to learn, secondly, look back to grow. Look back to grow. Yeah, I want to see us as a people do better. I need a witness right there. I want to see us do better. I mean, we got the church thing going great, but I, 
I want your life to be great. Here it is. I want your money to be great. I want your credit to be great. Got no help up in here. As a people. And I want us to mobilize with intentionality so that we can make a greater impact for the kingdom of God. We look back to learn. We look back to grow. Reflection is essential. But the text is moving. Verse 4 says, we will not hide from them. We will not hide them from their children, but will tell a future generation the praiseworthy acts of the Lord, his might. Let me finish that verse since I'm here. His might and the wondrous works he has performed. Y'all, we're also going to look forward in faith. We're going to look forward in faith. Well, Pastor Brown, I, I must admit I'm a bit discouraged when I watch the news and I see the violence and I see all the things that are taking place in my community, beyond my community. Y'all, we look forward in faith. And we got to know that the same God that carried us through all that he's carried us through will continue to do so. Y'all, we got to look forward in faith. No time to give up. No time to quit. I spoke at a black history program this past, what day was that, brother? Wednesday. God bless you. This Wednesday. Wait till you turn 54. This past Wednesday. And I challenged the individuals there that it's always too soon to quit. Y'all, we, we have to have this, this zeal, this desire to not just see our house do well, but to see our block do well, to see our community do well. And we cannot give up. This is not the time to give up. This is not the time to become cynical and negative. I'm almost finished. I know this is not the time. This is the time to look forward in faith. So the scripture says you got to tell others of God's faithfulness. Now, if I, if I were just doing BTU, I would say that's good old-fashioned witnessing. That's good old-fashioned telling people of the good news of the Lord. we got to tell people because, watch this, people of faith who are also people of color, y'all, we have the good news because we know what the Lord has done in and through us. So there has to be this, this desire to fight. And we're fighting, remember, not for victory, but from victory. I've told this before when I was a freshman, freshman in college, someone pressed into my hand uh, the miseducation of the Negro. It was written by Dr. Carter G. Woodson, and I've quickly thumbed to this section that was entitled The Backdoor Mentality. Dr. Woodson suggests that if you can't control a man's thinking, you won't have to worry about his actions. So if you send a man to the back door repeatedly, even when he has a right to go through the front door because of his thinking, he will send himself to the back door. But then Dr. Woodson blew my mind. He said, not only that, even if there is no longer a back door because of his thinking, his mentality, watch this, he will make one. I need for you to know, beloved, that so many of our young people, our young men and young women, they are making back doors. They're living through the back doors. They're, they're, they're living beneath their potential. This is, this is why the, the scripture says, listen, we got to tell them of his wondrous works. We got to let them know that there's more to life than you may be experiencing. It doesn't begin with culture. It begins with Christ. But you can't deny the fact that you are a person of color living in this world. So we know that Christ sets us free. Christ gives us freedom. Christ has done a wonderful work for us. That's the beauty of history. So when you walk out of here, reflect on these babies dancing and singing and, and the wonderful uh, 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 videos that we saw today, especially from Dr. King, and just know. We're not angry because God has been too good. Give God a hand of praise right there. Come on, come on, come on. Praise his name, praise his name. 
praise his name. Uh, I simply want to pray. I want to pray. I think that's most of I don't think we, we prayed yet in the service. We want to pray. And uh, if you're able, would you stand with me and just elbow with somebody? You ain't got to touch them. Just elbow them. Do something. Let them know you're next to them. Yeah, that's cool. You can elbow them. Amen. 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 Heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much for today. Thank you, Lord God, for the reminder of our history, the beauty of our history. Thank you, Father God, that we were able to see your hand with us, for us, under us, pushing us. So, Father, we've gathered here not, not as an angry mob, but as a grateful people. We're so grateful for your goodness. Now, Father, there's some things about our culture that upset us. But rather than waste time being angry, we're going to use our time wisely. And so, Father, I pray for us to be intentional about our faith, intentional about our walk. And, Father, I'm praying right now for, for this Silver Star Brigade to continue to pour into us. And Father, I pray for those of us that are not yet silver stars that we would slow down to learn. Father, you taught us today, simply put, that reflection is essential. Lord, we got to look back. We got to reflect. We got to remember. We got to learn. So Father, in faith, I'm asking that you would help us to take the mantle and to pass it on to these younger people. Father, there is a world that awaits them. And Father, we want them to be ready. Ready with their faith. Ready with the culture wars that they will face. And Father, we pray for those also who are not feeling well on today. Those who are undergoing treatment. Those who are just going through. And Father, I'm asking that you would touch them, whether on campus or online. By the power of your spirit, heal those broken hearts. Heal those broken bodies. Restore, Father God. Remove anything that's not like you, spiritually, emotionally, or physically. And Father, I'm asking in faith for deliverance for that man, woman, boy, or girl. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Give God a hand of praise. Don't sit down. Don't sit down. Give God a hand of praise. Give God a hand of praise. Come on. Come on. Come on. Now, here is the most unorthodox invitation I could give. Most unorthodox. If you're here right now and you say, Pastor Brown, there is a void in my heart in my life. And I've tried to fill it with everything I thought could do it. But Pastor Brown, there is something that I can't seem to fix on my own. I'm here to let you know that the fix is Jesus. The fix is the Lord. And if you've never knowingly and willingly invited the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your life, to ask him to forgive you of your sins, to put you in a right relationship with the Father, this moment right now is for you. I'm not going to take long. I'm just going to give it. I'm just going to share it real quickly. Some things you simply got to know. God loves you, has a wonderful plan for your life. But because of our own sinfulness, we're separating. We can't know and experience it. And then you got to know that Jesus Christ is the only provision, the only payment for our sin indebtedness. Your response is to receive his free gift of salvation. That's it. No magical potions, prayer in the word. If you say, Pastor, I'm ready to, I'm ready to, to receive Christ. That's, that's right. This moment is for you. Hold on. I'm almost finished. Second and finally, you may say, Pastor Brown, man, I've received the gift of salvation. I know that I'm a child of God. I'm saved, but I don't have a church home, and I'm, I'm really looking. Watch this. This may not be the church that you're looking for, but allow us to help you point you in the right direction. By faith. Don't let this moment pass. Take full opportunity of what's being afforded. So to receive the gift of salvation or to become a member of our faith community, this moment right now is for you. Will you take a step of faith? 
will you come? Everybody's looking. Everybody's going to see you move. But hey, we're a family. We're not going to have you say anything publicly. We're going to take you right out to one of our private rooms and talk to you and pray with you. Is there one? Is there one? Is there one? Is there one? We love you. We're here to serve you. Give God a hand of praise. Give God a hand of praise. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Well, as we get ready to go, we're going uh, to raise an offering. And the way, way we give, you can give on your way out as you exit. And we trust you to do that. There will be men standing there with baskets. Or you can give online, greaterlifedallas.com slash giving. And you can give right there and all that good stuff. But we have brothers in the back. That, as a matter of fact, we got a security guard. You can't leave until you give. Amen. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Uh, but uh, uh, amen. Don't sit down, y'all. We come on, y'all. Y'all can stand a little longer than that. Come on, stand up. Come on. Come on. We're ready to go. Now listen. I want to acknowledge all of our special guests who are here. We have, if if you're here and your baby participated in uh, your grandbaby, your niece, or whatever, just lift your hand. You're here to support the little ones here. I see you. Come on, family. I see we got a whole row here. Come on, come on. I see you. I see you. Praise God. Thank y'all so much for coming. If you're also, this is your first time, maybe your second time here, and I have not had the privilege of shaking your hand, I would be right in the foyer. It would be my honor. Nicole and I would be honored to just shake your hand and just to thank you for coming. Amen. Amen. So listen, on your way out, you're going you gonna to give. Amen. Somebody say amen. Uh, full week of activities this week. Y'all, we're getting ready for resurrection season. Uh, Easter is coming quickly, coming quickly. And I want you to be so mindful of that as we get ready to, to launch into some new initiatives. I sure didn't hear that. I, yeah, we're getting ready to do that. Yes, yes, yes. I, I, didn't I say that? Yeah, we're getting ready to say, lift every voice. Yeah. Okay, so everyone stand, everyone stand. Uh, Pastor Spears, come and close us out in prayer after they do lift their voices. You can lead in the song too, Pastor Spears. Come on, come on, lead us in. Who's going to lead it? Come on, come on. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. Everybody sing, everybody sing. Come on, come on. Lift every voice and sing Till earth and heaven Ring with the heart Sing a song. Are we?
Amen. Real quick, before we leave, we have uh, black history calendars on your way out, one per family. That's one per family, okay? They some nice uh, calendars too. Let us pray. Father, thank you for today. Uh, thank you for what our, our hearts have felt and our eyes have seen. Uh, God, we are grateful, Lord, for your mighty hand that has been on our lives all of these years. In spite of what life and culture has dealt us, Lord, it's because of you, Lord, and your love and your grace that we've made it this far. Now, Lord, as we leave, we thank you for traveling grace. We thank you for the fellowship that will happen after this service. And God, we just honor you and we bless your name. We love you for who you are. You are God and you are holy. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Y'all be well.